In this room of the Bainbridge Laboratories, selected representatives of the press and scientific world are gathered to witness one of the strangest experiments yet attempted by men. There is an atmosphere of tenseness as five of the world's foremost inventors make last minute adjustments on a weird mechanism of wires, tubes, and scientific instruments known as the Metallogen Man. The dynamometer, Mr. Arnold, please. Thank you. Well, that's it, gentlemen. Professor Arnold. Two long years of painstaking toil, months of research, and many failures, my colleagues and I have created a mechanical creature sensitive to the impulses of electronic energy. This robot represents harness power undreamed of by mortal man. The world is on the threshold of a new era in scientific advancement. Metallogen men will free the human race from the shackles of manual labor and industrial enslavement. We are now ready to prove our claims. Must weigh a ton. Would a couple of you gentlemen be good enough to examine that bank vault door to be certain it is locked? see if the metallogen man can open that door.
Scientific circles have been set agog by this astounding metallogen man. Captains of industry have already expressed keen interest in its potentialities. Manufactured in quantities, these robots will be able to ease the burden of human toil. To the five scientists who invented this mechanical giant belongs full credit. No doubt a grateful public will bestow upon them the laurels to which they are so justly entitled. Professor Ames, Professor Marsden, you and your co-workers are usurping the glory and the credit for an invention that is rightfully mine. For that reason, I am forced to destroy you. That man is mad. He must go to the police without delay. You're right. Professor Shaw, listen closely. Your colleagues, Professor Marsden and Ames, died because they knew the secret of the Metallogen Man. You are to be the third to meet their fate. You have one minute. Hello. 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 Who's there? closely on the mysterious deaths of Professors Ames and Marston, tragedy has once again struck at a member of the Bainbridge Laboratories. The body of Jonathan Shaw, co-inventor of the recently perfected Metallogen Man, was found at his home late last night, apparently strangled to death. Police are baffled about the identity of the murderer. Ghastly, fantastic. I wish you two had never become involved in this invention. That's right, Miss Bev. We're all in danger, I think. I never did like that rabbit, no harm. Not from his first consumption. You'd think the police would be able to unearth some clue. Oh, I'm sure they're doing all they can. Nevertheless, I think we ought to take every precaution to safeguard our invention. I took the liberty to already arrange for that. Dad didn't think you'd mind, Professor Ernst. Mine? Certainly not. I'm delighted. Uh, just what have you arranged, Arnold? Since we've already concluded a deal with the Brady Company to manufacture these robots, I've asked them to remove our model to their plant without delay. They're sending their engineer, Ken Morgan, to supervise the packing and shipping. His train arrives today at noon. Dad and I will meet him at the Union Station. Excellent. Excellent. I'll feel a good deal safer when this Morgan gets here. That must be him. Mr. Morgan? That's right. Professor Arnold sent us out here to pick you up. He said he sent your telegram to get off here instead of going on through to the Union Depot. Yes, I have the telegram right here. I was a little puzzled at the change in plans. Well, the professor's a very busy man. Sometimes he doesn't know from one minute to the next what he's going to be doing. You know how these scientists are. Yes, I've met quite a few of them. I'll take your bag. I hope you don't mind riding in this truck. It's all we could find. We had to leave the lab in such a hurry. It's all right with me. Fine. Uh, 
I think the rear door came open. I can't understand why Ken Morgan didn't come in on that train. Dad, could he have stopped off at the Oakdale station by mistake? Oh, I don't believe so. But maybe we'd better go there to make certain. Well, Flash, yes. drive us to the Oakdale station, please, and don't spare the horses. I'll be glad to, Professor. Morgan, just like you ordered. That's fine. Now relieve him of his credentials, and you, Nordic, assume his identity. Then pick up the robot at the Bainbridge Laboratory and bring it here. What do we do with Morgan? Get rid of him. I don't want any trace of him left. He's as good as done for right now. Mr. Morgan. This is what we want. Thanks for stopping. I've had an accident, and I'm in an awful hurry to get to town. Well, we'll be glad to give you a lift. Where can we drop you? At the Bainbridge Laboratory, if you happen to be going by there. Well, that's a coincidence. I'm connected with that organization. I'm Professor Arnold. Well, you're just the man I'm looking for. I'm Ken Morgan of the Brady Corporation. Ken Morgan? Well, what are you doing way out here? Dad and I just left the Union Station where we were supposed to meet you. I'll explain that on the way, Miss Arnold. We mustn't lose any time getting to your laboratory. What's the hurry, Morgan? I have reason to believe that your invention is in imminent danger of being stolen. Flash, we haven't a moment to lose. Did 
anyone call here to pick up on my thousand man? Yes, sir, Mr. Kenneth Morgan. Well, that man tricked you. This is Mr. Morgan right here. Well, he showed me his credentials. He and another fella came here in one of our trucks. You better call up the police and report the fact to me. Yes, sir. Control unit, too. What's this? Where did you find that? Right over there near the door. What is it? It's the metallogen disc, the most vital part of the robot. Without it, the automaton can't operate. It must have come off while those men were carrying it out. Once they discover it's missing, they'll undoubtedly attempt to regain it. I'll place it under lock and key where they'll never find it. I know just the place. The cellar vault. That's an excellent idea. Here, Babs, you put it away. Well, I call Professor Ernst and tell him what's happened. Wait a minute. For all we know, that line may be tapped. I didn't think of that. Well, I'd better go see him personally. And that's how it stands, Ernst. The thieves have vanished without leaving a single clue. At least we have one thing to be thankful for. You have the metalliton disc. Without that, the thieves can't operate the robot. Well, that's little consideration for all the work we've done. If only Morgan had reached here a day sooner, our invention would now be in safekeeping. What makes you so sure this man you picked up today is the real Morgan? Oh, well, he explained that he... Explained, yes. But you admit he had no credentials. And though he claimed he had an accident, he seemed to be unhurt. Well, that's true. Well, there may be something in what you say. Of course there is. For all you know, this Morgan may be in league with the thieves who got away with the metallogen man. Well, what do you suggest? To be perfectly safe, say nothing to anybody, trust no one. Furthermore, uh, suppose you remove the disc from the vault and let me take care of it. Don't forget, this alleged Morgan knows where it is at present. I have no objections, if that will relieve your mind. I assure you it will. Very well, I'll bring it here this evening. Fine. According to these blueprints, the Metallogen Man works on a combination sound light wave principle. Exactly. What does this specify? The remote control unit which operates the robot. Every movement and gesture made by the automaton is caused by the operation of one or more of these dials. Seems a bit complicated. Oh, it isn't really. Notice how simply the dials are located on the board. stolen the disc in my car. What? There's no use trying to chase them. We better call the police. On second thought, I don't think it would be wise to call the police just yet. But those men have stolen the most vital and irreplaceable part of our machine. Don't you realize what that means? Well, certainly I do. And I'm just as upset as you are. 
But let's not do anything rash. I... I don't understand your attitude, Ernst. The police didn't accomplish anything when you reported the theft of the Metallurgy man to them, did they? No, no, not yet. I doubt if they ever will. Unless we can figure out something more tangible to report to them. Otherwise, we'll merely be sending them on another wild goose chase. Well, I admit I don't know what to do or think. We've got to think this thing out. There must be some angle we've overlooked. Thank you. I wonder where Dad could have gone at this time of night, especially without telling me. Maybe he got tired and went home. That's possible. Why don't you call and find out? All right. Hello, Katie. Has my father arrived home? He hasn't. I see. Thanks. Could he have gone over to Professor Ernst again? I never thought of that. I'll phone him. No, let's drive over instead. I've heard so much about this, Ernst. I'd like to meet him. All right. Are you sure Morgan didn't see you leave the laboratory? I'm positive no one saw me. Yet someone knew you were coming and exactly what you were bringing. Pretty obvious someone knew about it. Excuse me just a moment. Uh, you stay right here. Uh, see if you can remember someone to whom you may have talked. I'll be right back. yet. Excellent. With this, I can put the rest of my plan into operation. me, Ernst. You're the thief. Yes. But the knowledge won't do you any good now. Take him downstairs. You go ahead. I'll get rid of whoever that is. Why, good evening, Miss Hartman. Pleasant surprise. Good evening, Professor Ernst. Oh, this is Mr. Morgan, Professor Ernst. How do you do? How do you do? I came to see if my father's with you. Why, no, he, he left a long time ago. But, uh, won't you come in? Thank you. I haven't seen your father since this afternoon. I had hoped to find him here. You say Professor Arnold left here quite a while ago? Yes, indeed. 
then his hat must have flown back in through the window. Drop him. Keep him covered. I'll take a look around the place. Scheming Ernst get control of the Metallurgian Man? Is Professor Arnold doomed because of his scientific knowledge? And what will happen to Miss Arnold? Don't fail to see The Edge of Doom, the second exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape at this theater next week. Morgan is attacked by strangers and almost killed while on his way to investigate an amazing invention, the Metallurgian Man. Professor Arnold, 
the inventor of this robot is trapped by a mad scientist, a man named Ernst. Morgan and Arnold's daughter, Babs, attempt to rescue her father, when suddenly... You say Professor Arnold left here quite a while ago? Yes, indeed. Then his hat must have flown back in through the window. Drop it! Drop it! Keep him covered. I'll take a look around the place. if I smoke? No, go right ahead. upstairs with Ernst and may need our help. Fireplace on this side. I hope that's the same. Let me out of here. Well, you two certainly turn out to be a help to me. Letting Morgan be the daylights out of both of you. Well, he took us by surprise. Where is he now? He and Arnold are trying to find their way out of your lab. 
They'll starve to death before they do. Go down and get those fellows. I'll force them to let us out of here. I'm back at the fireplace. Look for a concealed button. Oh, are you all right, dear? Yes, I'm quite all right. What happened to Ernst? You were supposed to be guarding him. Oh, he locked me in a secret closet, and by the time I managed to get out, I, he was gone. Then all three of them escaped. I don't see how the two men downstairs got out. I don't know how, but they did. Fortunately for you, they didn't take your metallogen men. What about the control unit? It was in the other room a little while ago. We'd better take a look and see if it's still there. Right. It's gone. Yes, I expected that. We'd better call the police. I'll do that right away. Police department, please. Yeah, it looks like we won't be able to stay at your house any longer. Not for a while. Do you think the cops will pin the murder of those other scientists on us? Oh, stop your gabbing and get us to where we're going. I want to get back to work. On what? Arnold's got the robot. But I have the control unit. Arnold and Morgan have it all figured out how they're going to make these machines for the benefit of humanity. But they're figuring without me. If my plan works out, I'll utterly crush their exalted scheme. Yes. Yes, I see. But you will keep me informed of any development. Thanks, Inspector. Well, the police have found no trace of Ernst and his men. They're too smart to be apprehended so easily. What worries me is that Ernst is likely to make another attempt to steal your metallogen man. Why should he? After all, he knows the secret of its construction and can easily build one of his own. One most important thing stops them, Ken. Metallogen. You're quite right. I did a little investigating on my own, and I found that meteorite metal is practically non-existent. You're right. I bought my girl some perfume once. It was supposed to be non-resistant, but it didn't do me any good. I just thought of something, Ken. Yes? If there's any supply of metallogen to be had, Dr. Feely Swain of the Greystone Museum would know about it. Is he in town? Yes. Do you think I ought to call him? No. I'll go have a talk with him. Good idea. Are you still tinkering with that control unit, Professor? You're playing for trouble. What makes you think so? If you figure on using this gadget to walk the robot over here, you'll have Arnold and everyone in town follow it right to this place. Just what gives you the idea that I have any intention of recapturing the Metallogen Man at this moment? Right. While we were in possession of the Metallogen Man, I hit a microphone and a transmitter inside of it. They are tuned to the television wavelength of this control unit. Thus, we shall be able not only to see what Morgan and Arnold are doing, but also to hear whatever they're planning. Dr. Wayne of the Greystone Museum. Merely what we already know. The only available metallogen is on display there. Heavens, if Ernst should land on this. Yes, I warned Dr. Wayne that there might be trouble. He closed the geological exhibit today, and for added safety, is placing a 24-hour guard over the museum. If so, then the Greystone Museum has no immediate danger. That's where Arnold's mistaken. Think of it. Metallogen. Rarer than gold. More precious than emeralds. Right here with an easy reach. Yeah, but how are we going to get a hold of it? 
by doing the very thing against which they're prepared. Without fail, we should obtain the metallogen tonight. here. I started to check its mechanism and I found that. A transmitter and a microphone. Ernst must have installed that while the Metallogen man was still in his hands. That means he must have overheard every word we said. In that case, he knows of your trip to the museum. You two wait here. I'm going over there. Come on, Flash. Turn off the boiler and turn on the gas. Huh? What? Oh, it's you, Mr. Morgan. Come on, make it snappy. You sure can do things sudden like where we're we going? To the Greystone Museum. There may be trouble there. Don't you think we got enough trouble here without going there? I got both guards, like you told me to, boss. Anyone else inside? Not a one. Let's get that door open. before I get the whole neighborhood over here. We'll have to work fast. That alarm will not be ringing some patrol station. Lord, come on, come on. Thank you. 
afford to lose. Get that metallurgy out of here. Him. Get that stuff out of here. Get that aid. Clear out. Flash. 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 Go away from me, you big baboon. Let me sleep. Take it easy, Flash. I'll be back for you later. right in his hand. This ain't no weapon. It's just a razor. Think of that. Just a razor. And I suppose we find any bloodstains on that, you'll claim you nicked yourself while shaving. We'll haul him in and grill him. Grill? Grill what? Who, me? Take him down to the car, Mike, and I'll see what other damage he's done. Come on, sonny boy. Oh, you can't do this to me. Oh, yes. seems to have been trailing us ever since we left the museum. Slow down and see what he does. He's trailing us all right. The side road a little further ahead. Turn up, then step on it. and stop suddenly. Will Thor, the ape, become a willing tool of his evil master? Will the treacherous Ernst succeed in cornering the world's supply of metallogen? Does danger threaten Professor Arnold and his daughter? Don't fail to see Flames of Fate, the third exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. giant gorilla steals the world's last known supply of that wonder metal, metallogen. Ken Morgan attempts to recover the precious metal, but suddenly...
Well, well, with a lethal weapon right in his hand. This ain't no weapon. It's just a razor. Think of that. Just a razor. And I suppose we find any bloodstains on that, you'll claim you nicked yourself while shaving. We'll haul them in and grill them. Grill? Grill what? Who, me? Take him down to the car, Mike, and I'll see what other damage he's done. Come on, sonny boy. Oh, you can't do this to me. Oh, yes. That car seems to have been trailing us ever since we left the museum. Slow down and see what he does. All right. The side road a little further ahead. Turn up, then step on it. Pull over and stop suddenly. Last time he'll trail anybody. Now to get that ape back to the zoo. Coast is clear, Ernst. All right, Naughty.
Come on, Thor. Come here, Thor. Come on. to be here any minute now. Hey, Mason. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Norty. Kind of late tonight, aren't you? Yeah, the ape had a touch of colic and I had to fix him up. Nice. Yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, betcha. Here he comes. Everything okay? Smooth as silk. Let's get out of this park. Bring those metallic containers inside. All right, Ernst. The only known supply of metallogen in existence, and that's what I call a good night's work. Good. With this and my knowledge of the metallogen man, I've practically got the world in the palm of my hand. You might as well count us in on that, too. This isn't metallogen. What? Well, it's got to be. It's nothing but coal dust and phosphorus. We've been tricked. Do you think Morgan and Arnold got a hold of the real stuff? I don't know. But you can depend on it. They pretty well know where it is. That sure puts us behind the eight ball. They've not only got control of the metallogen, but the robot as well. But you still got the control unit. They've rendered that useless. Then we're licked. No, only delayed. What we must do is find out Arnold's next move, then take the play away from him. Have you got any ideas? A pretty good one. But it must wait until morning. certainly have Babs and myself worried about you, Ken. When you didn't call last night, we were almost frantic. I knew you'd be worried. That's why I called as soon as I could get to a phone this morning. 
I'm sorry I wrecked your car, Professor Arnold. Oh, never mind that. The fact that you're alive and that the metallogen is safe more than makes up for the loss of the car. That was certainly clever of Dr. Wayne to fill those containers with a worthless chemical. By the way, where did you hide the real stuff? In a place nobody would ever think of. We'll go over there later on and pick up the container which the museum agreed to let us have. Why, Flash, what happened to you? I just had a misunderstanding with two police officers. You were arrested? At home, I was only pinched. What for? They accused me of carrying lethal weapons. All I had was a razor. Them policemen, they grilled me and they grilled me, just like I was a pope chop. But he's the one who got burnt up, because they couldn't prove nothing. Well, you go home and take it easy today, Flash. Oh, thank you, sir, Professor. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot this. I got it on my way in. Thanks, Flash. Say, hey, this is good news. My company has decided to manufacture the robots right here in the city. Providing, naturally, a suitable factory can be found. Well, if that's the case, I happen to know of an empty warehouse on the corner of 3rd and Hammond Streets. It might just suit your purpose. Good, I'll take a look at it. I have an appointment with my attorney, Martin Gilbert, this afternoon. His office isn't far from there. If you like, I'll drop you off on my way. That suits me. Come along. and his daughter know where metallogen is hidden. Morgan is going to warehouse, third and Hammond. Arnold has appointment with attorney Martin Gilbert this afternoon. That's all we need to know. And Arnold won't be the only one to keep that appointment. Thanks for the lift. Do you want us to stop for you on the way home? No, thanks. I don't know just how long I'm going to be here. Well, we'll see you later then, Ken. take a look at this building. I may be interested in leasing it. Go ahead, mister. Pretty elevator back there. Goes to the upper floor. What's in there? That's the washroom. It's locked and I haven't got a key to it. Raise your hands, Morgan. Face the wall. Professor Arnold? Yes, yes I am. Now, Mr. Morgan told me that you and your daughter were in that building and described your car to me. I've been waiting for you. Why should he do that? He'd like you to come to the office of the Hanson Realty Company. I believe it has something to do with the lease of a warehouse. Oh, yes, yes. Well, thank you very much. Where's the office of your company? Well, if you don't mind my riding back with you, I'll take you right to it. Oh, not at all. Come right along. Well, thanks. You sit in the rail? All right. Now, are you going to tell me why you hid that metallogen or aren't you? My mother told me never to talk to strangers. I have a way to make you change your mind. Butler, make sure that oven is plenty hot. This conveyor was used for feeding bricks into the firing oven. I'm sure it would work equally well with a charming young lady aboard. 
place Miss Arnold on the belt. Where is the key for it? My right hand coat pocket. All right. Make the lady comfortable again. I'm going after the battalion right now. It had better be there. Hold them till I get back. storage company. Make it snappy. All right. succeed? Will the robot turn on Professor Arnold, its inventor? Will Thor, the ape, become a menace to his cruel keeper? Don't fail to see The Fatal Search, the fourth exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. Metallogen man are overpowered in a deserted brickyard. Under torture, the professor tells where the precious metal has been hidden. Ken breaks loose and attempts to rescue his friends as suddenly.
some time, Miss Arnold. Let's get these ropes off and get out of here. Hey, Butler! Well, there goes our chance of stopping Ernst from getting that metallogen. Dad, why don't we contact the coal storage company and tell them not to let Ernst near your locker? Well, I don't see how we can. It's a long way from here to a telephone. Then you can rest assured it'll be too late. And the best thing we can do is start walking. Looks like you're right. From now on, Blake, we're going to have everything our own way. I have all the specifications for constructing those robots. We've just picked up enough metallogen to operate an army of them. i got to hand it to you, Professor. Especially for the way you put it over in those storage plant people. All that took was just a little nerve. I suppose you want to go back now and take care of that meddling scientist and his two stooges. No, that can wait. First, I want to go over to the municipal zoo. Okay. Wait right here for me. That's swell. I want you to take this suitcase into my workshop. While you're there, make sure there's no police around the house. And then you want me to report back here, you? No, Blake and I will drive past the place in the truck. If the coast is clear, signal from the front door. You bet.
Get over to the Bainbridge Laboratory. Find out how closely they're guarding Arnold's robot. You can pick me up here later. Okay, boss. your car back. Where did the police find it? Near the West End Viaduct. I must have wounded that one man pretty badly. There are big blood stains on the front seat. I suppose the police still haven't found any trace of the stolen metallogen they can. No, Professor. And those people at the storage plant never suspected anything when urged instead of yourself came to get the contents of your locker. Fact is, Professor, not only the police got confused, I got confused myself. And when I get confused, that's something. <laughs> What's your father doing? He's trying out a control unit which he built before he decided to use Metelligen as the energizing force. Let's hope it works. That must be a message from Blake. Morgan and others escaped. Arnold is now testing robot control unit at his lab. I should have known better than to trust Butler and Flint to guard them. Get me that control unit. just as well as the other one did. Very much to my surprise, it does. Now, all I have to do is to make some minor adjustments on the robot to compensate for certain elements. Metallogen disc. If it hadn't been for your quick thinking, Babs and I would have been goners. Can't make out whether this this control unit or the robot itself. You sure you feel all right? Oh, I'm all right. Only very disappointed. I can see now that unit will not work without metallogen. Dad, I wonder if Ernst could have been interfering by using the control unit which he stole from you. No, oh, I don't believe so. He had no way of knowing I was going to make my test. Then that leaves us right where we were before. Needing metallogen, which we can't find. That thing ain't coming back to life no more, is he? It's all right, Flash. You can come out now. I just thought of something. What is it, Dan? Come here, I'll show you. <clears throat> this is a radio detector similar to those which the Radio Intelligence Division uses to locate illegal transmitters. That's very interesting, but of what use can it be to us? Radio waves and those transmitted by Vitalogen are very similar. Consequently, with this instrument, we should be able to find the place where Ernst has hidden those containers. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go, Professor. Arnold has the instrument which will enable him to locate hiding places of Vitalogen suggest you get ready to move it. I'm leaving here now. That's a fine kettle of fish. Let me worry about it. 
You'll get back on your job. Workshop on Highfield Road. You can pick up Butler on the way. Do you think Arnold and Morgan can trail us there? I hope they do. You'll be able to give them a rousing reception. It will be a pleasure. Why did you tell me to stop here? The needle has been pointing east right along, but just now it changed to a southwesterly direction. Could that mean we've passed the place? No, I think it means that Ernst is moving the metallism to another location. Turn to the left at the next corner, Ken, and we'll see what happens then. Very well. This inside, you go hide the truck. You better turn off here. The indicator points in that direction. you think. Let's stick it under the bed. The needle registers peak intensity right here, and the indicator points toward that house. I'll go over and take a look around the place. I better go along with you. No, you stay right here. I'll be back presently. Mysterious Dr. Draper. Why does Ernst make an attempt on his life? Who will be Thor's next victim? 
don't fail to see Rocks of Doom, the fifth exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. and Professor Arnold locate the stolen metallogen. But before Ken can recover it, he is attacked by hirelings of the treacherous Ernst. Suddenly... Goodness, you're safe. I'm all right, but those two men who are with me in there are lost. No one could survive that explosion. And if the metallogen was in their possession, we won't be able to find any trace of it either. They had it with them all right, which proves they were working for Ernst. Then we're beaten, Ken. That was all the metallogen known to exist. We'd better drive into town and notify the police. They'll want to investigate this. It's a good idea. It appears to me we ought to get this here rabbit to the junkyard now. In the first place, Professor Ernest has got the only control unit to make this rabbit work. And in the second place, we ain't got no mentalogen to make more of them in the first place. So where is we? I'm afraid you're right, Flesh. We're stymied unless Professor Arnold can discover a new supply of that precious metal. Well, I'm a scientist, not a magician, Ken, so you're quite right about our being stymied. I'm afraid that robot will never work again. Afraid? Why, Professor, that's the best news I've heard in a long time. Now, let me go. Let me go. Let me go! What's the matter with him? He and the robot just had their usual misunderstanding. Look what it says in today's paper. Read that. Science triumphs again. Secrets of Earth yield a new device. Dr. John Draper of Marshalltown University eminent geologist and inventor of many scientific instruments, today announced his newest device. Draper claims he'll be able to detect the presence of meteorites which may have crashed to Earth and buried themselves into it long before the dawn of civilization. Read that line. That's the really interesting one. It's from certain meteorites that the rarest of all elements, metallogen, is obtained. Well, if Draper can substantiate his statements, our problem may be solved. You're right, but listen to this. It is recalled that metallogen is the essential element of a robot recently invented by Professor Franklin Arlen of the Bainbridge Laboratories of Harrisville. However, lack of commercial supply of this mineral has crippled manufacture, arrangements for which has been previously completed. I suggest that you call this Dr. Draper long distance right away. By all means, Dad. You're right, I'll do it now. Hello? 
Long distance? I want to talk to Marshalltown, to Dr. John Draper. Yes, this is Dr. Draper. Who? Professor Arnold. Oh. Oh. Yeah? Well, I understand your difficulties, Arnold, and I'd like to help you. But I'm very busy. Well, of course, we expect to compensate you and we'll make any reasonable arrangements. Well, that's up to you, Doctor. Just name the day. That's very nice of you. I'll be expecting it. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. He's going to wire me later in the day, just when he'll arrive here. I'm so glad he agreed to come. Shall I arrange for his hotel accommodations? Oh, you'd better not. What we select might not please him. He seems to have a peculiar disposition. As far as I'm concerned, he can have a flat head. Just as long as he gets some intelligen for us. <laughs> Don't stand there knocking all day. If you must disturb me, come in. Dr. Draper? Who are you? What do you want? My name is Anderson. I represent certain Western mining interests which have sent me here to consult with you as to the possibility of acquiring your new invention. You're too late. I've already made a deal with someone else. I told you I made other arrangements. Arrangements with whom, Dr. Draper? With a Professor Arnold in Harrisville. Have you any of your business? Now, will you be kind enough to leave? I'm sorry to seem persistent, but this is a matter of great importance to my colleagues. In spite of your commitment to this man, Arnold, if you could find a little time for us, we'd make it worth your while. Not interested. And if you persist in wasting my time, how am I going to check this detector? I'm leaving tomorrow and have a great deal to do to get ready. I bid you good day, Mr. Anderson. Good day, Dr. Draper. Just one thing more, Doctor. In case your deal with Arnold shouldn't go through, where in Harrisville can I contact you? At the Standard Hotel. Now get out. Thank you.
my word for it, Flint. When I get through with this makeup, Reaper's own mother won't be able to tell me from her son. You could sure fool me with that beard. Did you pack my suitcase? Yeah, I put in everything you told me. You didn't forget the shortwave radio and the microphone? That's in there, all right. Fine. Now, give me my hat. Be on my way. Better let me out. Leave it open. You'll have to come back this way to phone the Standard Hotel. To reserve a room for Dr. Draper of Marshalltown. You see, I remember my orders. You'd better remember them. And don't forget to tell Nordic I want to see him shortly. Right. Yes, I am. I am Dr. Draper. Well, this is indeed a pleasure, Doctor. I'm so glad you came. Would you come in? Now that the preliminaries are over, let's get down to brass tacks. By all means. I'm even more impatient than you to consummate a deal. I'd like you to meet my associate, Ken Morgan, Dr. Draper. How do you do, sir? As I explained over the phone, we are prepared to pay any reasonable amount for the use of your invention. Reasonable? From my point of view or from yours? Well, there's, there's no good reason why we shouldn't be able to come to terms. I have drawn up a rough form of contract by which I acquire a 25% interest in any profit resulting from the utilization of my invention. That's a stiff price you're asking, Doctor. Take it or leave it. Seems to me you've got us over a barrel. Wait a minute, Professor. I'm beginning to think we don't need Dr. Draper after all. You've already demonstrated that your instrument can locate metallogen in its pure form. Why not then give it a trial and see if it will lead us to a meteorite, which by your own admission contains a certain amount of that precious mineral. I've tried that, Ken, but it won't work. Why not? Because the meteorite contains so little metallogen compared with other substances that my detector isn't sensitive enough to react to it. I see. Do I understand you already have discovered some metallogen? Discovered isn't the word. We tried to recover it, but it was destroyed by a demented scientist who calls himself Professor Ernst. Isn't that rather a crude way to talk about a man of science? Man of science? My eye. The man's a thief and a murderer. And I'd like nothing better than to get my hands around his neck. Gentlemen, these arguments get us no place. Dr. Draper has a price. It seems to be up to us to meet it or turn it down. Precisely. Still, before we sign anything, I'd like to know if Draper's instrument will do what he claims. I'm willing to give a demonstration. That's fair enough, isn't it? Go ahead. That's an excellent idea. I need a half hour to make some minor adjustments in my detector. When I've finished, we can drive out to the rock quarry in Greenwood Canyon. Uh, that's where I made my first test a couple of years ago. Well, since we expect you to be here for a while, Doctor, I'll show you to a room where you can do what you want in complete privacy. Keep this room locked up, Doctor, and your telephone is a private line. This will do. If you'll excuse me. If there's anything you need, let us know. I will.
Municipal Zoo? I'd like to talk to Dick Nordic. I'll hold the line. Here's a drink for you, Thor. Hey, Nordic, you want it on the phone? Okay. Hello? This is Nordic. The place is the rim of the old rock quarry in Greenwood Canyon. Don't waste any time. Okay, I'll get started right away. shot for his asthma. In my earlier tests here, I detected traces of a meteorite underneath that overhang of rock. doesn't seem to show any reaction. I forgot the little antennae that fits into the socket. I'll get it out of the car. succeed in his terrifying mission of destruction? What evil designs has this arch fiend on Professor Arnold and his daughter? Don't fail to see a fiend in disguise, the sixth exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape at this theater next week. scientist disguises himself and tricks Ken Morgan and Professor Arnold into searching an abandoned quarry for a meteorite, the source of the extremely rare metallogen. When I made my earlier tests here, I detected traces of a meteorite underneath that overhang of rock.
needle doesn't seem to show any reaction. I forgot the little antennae that fits into the socket. I'll get it out of the car. Push! Push! Look out, Professor! Down here, Ken. Let me have a look at that ankle. It's all right. I just twisted a little. I, I really feel responsible for this gentleman. I should never have brought you to this place. Well, don't blame yourself, Doctor. The avalanche had nothing to do with your bringing us here. Forget it, Draper. Let's go on with a demonstration of your detector. Good idea. Uh, this is the antenna I went back to the car for. The movement of the needle indicates the presence of meteoric minerals. However, the slowness of the movement indicates that the quantity of such minerals is extremely minute. What would happen if metallogen, for instance, were present in larger quantities? In that case, the needle would move more violently, perhaps even be erratic. I see. I'm satisfied your detector will do the work. I suggest we go back to our place and sign the agreement with the doctor. That's all right with me. If this instrument can help us locate a commercial amount of metallogen, we're ahead. If not, what can we lose? <laughs> you know, Morgan, I'm beginning to give you credit for a lot more brains than I did at first. Coming from you, Draper, that's quite a compliment. <laughs> come on, boy. Come on, Thor. Come here. Come here, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, come here. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Easy, easy, easy. Boy's asthma. The vet said he'd be as good as new. Come on, Thor. Stop, Thor. Quit. Quit. I ain't scared of you no more, Mr. Rabbit. I made my mind up to that this morning. Look at here, Mr. Rabbit. I'm gonna get that soap and ain't nothing you can do about it. Take it easy now. You know me and you as friends, remember? Mr. Ken? Hey, Mr. Ken? What's the trouble, Flag? The rabbit's got my soap on him and he won't give it back to me. All you need is a little confidence. I've got a little enough now. If I had any less, I wouldn't be working here. See? Nothing to be afraid of. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess that does it, Dr. Treadwell. Is that contraption over there your famous metallogen man? That's right. not possible right now. If it doesn't work, why did you give it all that publicity? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the robot itself. Only we don't have the proper control unit with which to operate it. I don't understand. It's quite simple. That unit was stolen from us by that madman, Ernst. The more you tell me about this Professor Ernst, the more I'm inclined to believe he must be a very brilliant man. Brilliant, yes. But an arch fiend and a criminal. Why are you in such desperate need of intelligence to make this contraption work? Well, it's the essential element in the robot as well as the control unit. On the theory of interradiation. Sound scientific principle? I'd like to take a look at the metallogen in this thing. It's all right with me. Do you mind getting the disc can, please? Not at all. Well, 
this is my daughter Babs, Dr. Draper. I'm delighted to know you, Dr. Draper. I'm sorry I can't say the same thing about meeting you. I don't understand. Women have an unhappy faculty of setting men's plans. Personally, I wouldn't have it around my workshop. Oh, Babs has been a great help to us. In fact, she's responsible for my having contacted you. Well, thanks, Ken. I presume this disc carries energy waves to a stepper transformer on the inside of the robot? That's exactly right. Here, I'll show you. That's all there is to it. Well, let's not waste any more time on that thing. I'll get my detector, then Morgan and I can start out on our search. Nothing can suit me better. That man's the most eccentric person I've ever met. I'm inclined to think you're right, my dear. Metallogen tube out of the robot control unit. Then you and Butler rush it over to Dawson's paint factory. So Draper's detector will work. What do you want us to do after that? Stay there. Wait until I contact you later. Okay, boss. Any luck yet? There's nothing here in this part of the town. Suppose we try the industrial neighborhood. Suits me. Look at that needle jump. Why, it's going wild. That doesn't necessarily indicate the presence of meteorite matter. Are you kidding? You yourself explained how your detector works. So I did. But look around here, Morgan. This is a manufacturing neighborhood with all sorts of electrical machinery in full operation. That undoubtedly explains this instrument's unusual reaction. In other words, you're admitting that this machine isn't worth a continental. I have admitted nothing of the kind. I merely feel that we should have to look elsewhere. And where do you suggest we look now, my good friend? I'm leaving that entirely up to you. Everything worked out exactly as I planned. Get that metallogen tube back to my workshop. Now you wait there. I'll put it back in the control unit myself. Dr. Draper deliberately lied to you about the reaction of his detector. I'm convinced of it. Why should he? He's practically our partner. I don't know what his motive may be, but I do know I'd give anything to get a hold of that detector and go back to that paint factory. Well, you've been working rather late tonight, haven't you, Doctor? Time is of no importance. You yourself should know that. I'm not going straight to my hotel, and I don't want to leave the detector upstairs unguarded. I thought you might have a safe or a vault. Well, I will gladly take care of it for you, Doctor. Well, see that you do. If anything should happen to it, I'd never forgive you. Good night. Good night, Doctor. What could be sweeter? Do you mean you're going to borrow it now? I may never get another chance. Wake up, Flash. We're going for a ride. Oh, please don't take me for a ride, Mr. I ain't done nothing. Take it easy, Flash. 
Oh, excuse me, sir. I must have been dreaming. First, we'll take the professor and Miss Babs home. Then you and I are going to do a little sleuthing on the other side of town. Yes. I knew that Draper was lying. What does the thing mean, jumping around like that? It means that you and I are pretty good detectives, Flash. I'm going to take a look around the outside of this place. You stay here in the car and wait. Yes, sir. I'll stay in the car, but I won't guarantee you the car will stay here. <laughs> and it better stay here. I'm scared, but about in half a second, I'm going to get mad, brother, when I get mad. Oh.
succeed in his fiendish plan to steal the Metallurgian Man? Will Thor, the ape, revert to his killer instincts? Don't fail to see A Scream in the Night, the seventh exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. opposed to the man who calls himself Dr. Draper, decides to look for the stolen metallogen alone. The search leads him to a paint factory, which is shut down for the duration. How come this here rabbit is at this place when I know we left him at the laboratory? You can thank Ernst for this. Now, let's get this robot out of here and call the fire department. It don't make sense to me saving this here rabbit when he just tried to track you down and dispose of it indefinitely. Well, there's no time to argue. Let's get out of here before the whole building goes up in flames. So, you 
you two bungled again. Not us. You're the one that messed up everything. How dare you make such a statement? Well, it's the truth. If you hadn't sent the robot over there to interfere, Morgan wouldn't be alive to tell the tale. How do you figure that out? Butler had him trapped, and I started a fire which would have left no trace of him. That's right. He tried to throw me in the fire. We had to take a powder out of there to save our hides. Well, maybe it was my fault. I should have warned you in advance. And that's all there is, except that by the time Flash and I got the metallogen man into the back of the car, the fire department arrived and put out the blaze. Getting the robot out of here and using it to attack you must be the work of Ernst. There's no question you're right, my dear. But there's one big point that puzzles me. You mean how Ernst knew we were going out to that place last night? Precisely. I'd hate to suspect Dr. Draper of being involved in this. Shh. Careful. Well, if we're going to continue our search for a meteorite, we'd better get started. I can't afford to waste any more time than necessary on this project. It's our time you've been wasting. The question is why. I don't like your tone of voice, Morgan. I'll be glad to change it. Just as soon as you explain why you misled me about there being no meteoric substance near the paint factory. Why are you so positive there is? I borrowed your detector and went back there last night. You took my property without permission? Yes, and I proved to my satisfaction that you lied to me. Your detector clearly indicated the presence of metallogen in some form. That's all the impertinence I intend to take from this young upstart. There's your agreement. Null and void. Oh, you shouldn't have. Let's not be too hasty, Doctor. I'm sure we can iron everything out to our mutual satisfaction. It's no use arguing. I'm through. Just give me back my detector, and I'm on my way to Marshallton. Well, where is it? Right over here. You've ruined it. It happened accidentally, Doctor, I assure you. I'm sure it isn't seriously damaged. It's absolutely no use to me now. And you can keep it. I'm going to sue for this outrage. Well, that upsets all our careful planning. I can't blame Dr. Draper for being offended. You took entirely too much upon yourself without his authorization. It won't do any good to blame Ken, Dad. It's done and we have to make the best of it. I'm sorry, Professor. Maybe I shouldn't have borrowed the detector without his permission. But I'm not worried about him suing us. I'm sure this can be easily repaired. And if it'll help us locate some metallogen, we'll still give Draper his share. Agreement or no agreement. Ken is right, Dad. You'll see. Well, I hope so. You certainly handled that situation nicely. But it's too bad you had to leave the detector there. What do we need it for? Morgan really discovered a meteorite near that paint factory. All we have to do is dig for it, make sure that he doesn't get there before us. How are we going to do that? If you remember, a long time ago, the city started to bore a new sewer tunnel into that neighborhood. Yeah, but they ran into a hard rock formation and had to change its course. Exactly. And that hard rock formation is actually the meteorite. Maybe you're right. But how can we dig it out when the city's powerful equipment couldn't even budget? We don't have to. We let the metallogen man do it for us. Now we'll see how this reacts to the metallogen in this distance. I have my fingers crossed. No, it's beyond repair. There's only one way out of our difficulty. I'll run over to the hotel and try to square things with Draper. Yeah, as likely as not, he's checked out of there by now. Well, in that case, I'll run up to Marshalltown and talk to him in his lab. That's the thing to do, Ken. Come in. Pardon me, I'd like to see Dr. Draper. I'm sorry, but Dr. Draper's in the Bayview Hospital. Since when? I saw him only a few hours ago. You must be mistaken. He's been on the verge of death for several days. What? That can't be. Don't tell me, mister. I called the ambulance myself. Somebody attacked him here and fractured his skull. Is he a medium-sized, bald-headed man with a heavy beard and thick glasses? That's right. Do you think they let me see him at the hospital? Well, he just regained consciousness. I can't say if they'd allow anyone to visit him. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
remember, you can only stay a moment. And don't say anything to excite him. Right. Someone to see you, Dr. Draper. My name is Ken Morgan. I'm associated with Professor Arnold of the Bainbridge Laboratories. I'm glad you came, young man. I had a date with your colleague to demonstrate my detector before that lunatic attacked me. Yes, I just found out about that. I have an idea who it might be, but I haven't any proof. Go to my office, find a motion picture camera, have the film developed, and you will have your proof. Do you mean to say the police haven't found out about this? Not yet. You tell them for me. I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to leave now. Thank you, Doctor, and speedy recovery. Now, you just take it easy now and stay up there in your hutch. One of these days, I'm gonna have you doing my work, and I'll be sitting up there on the throne. This is a stick-up, mister. One false move and I'll drill you. I won't move, sir. No, sir, not me. Now, walk straight ahead. Straight ahead? Further. Further? Look here, mister. I can't go through these here walls. Or can I? Do as I say or else. Oh, what I'd give to be a ghost. You know who I am? No, sir, I don't want to get acquainted. I am the killer. The killer! That's what I thought you said. <laughs> the killer is a crime production. See it at your local theater. <laughs> Flash, what's the matter? Are you laying down on that job again, Flash? I did. I can hear the music of the angels. You were listening to the radio. We heard that crime program as we drove over. You know, it's a crime going around scaring people half to death. Well, Mr. Morgan telephoned us at the house saying he was back in town for us to meet him here. Yes, right this way. I want to show you something. He hung those things I ordered this morning, but he didn't say what kind of picture he's going to show. Good morning. Well, what's this all about, Ken? Yes, what's all the mystery? You no doubt recall how upset you were when I had that run-in with Dr. Draper. I only questioned the wisdom of antagonizing a man of his reputation and standing. The reputation and standing of the real Dr. Draper is above suspicion. The real Dr. Draper? Yes. Now, if you'll give me just a moment, I'll put this film in the projector, and I promise you a surprise. Flash, will you close the blinds, please? Yes, sir. It's been a long time since I've seen a moving picture. Turn that radio off, too, Flash. Yes. Standard Hotel. Now get out. Thank you, Doctor.
can open the blinds now, Flash. Yes. And to think that Ernst was able to pull the wool over our eyes that way. What became of the real Dr. Draper? He's in the hospital, very critically injured. Well, I owe you an apology, Ken. Forget it. I just thought of something. Ernst knows all about the location of the meteorite. By Jove, she's right. But what can we do about it? I suggest you and I take this film over to police headquarters. After they've seen it and heard all the facts, they'll figure out some way to help us. That's a good idea, Ken. You don't mind waiting here till we get back to you? Not in the least. I have loads of work to do on your book. So go ahead. Ernst, that must be Nordic. You sent for me, boss? Yes, we'll leave that eight tonight to get that robot out of the Bainbridge Laboratories. Why don't we walk him over like we did before? Because Arnold, no doubt, has removed the metallogen disc and it won't operate without that. I follow you. Now, I suppose you want me to take him to the tunnel sewer. That's right. But be sure not to use the entrance leading out of the paint factory. I'm positive the police have set a trap there. You know how you've been on this, Flint. I know what to do. Remember, no more slip-ups. Intelligent man prove a fiendish device for a novel murder? Will Ken Morgan be able to forestall impending disaster? Don't fail to see Death in the Dark, the eighth exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. picture, Ken Morgan and Professor Arnold learn that Dr. Draper is actually the treacherous Ernst. They go to the police, leaving Babs alone in the laboratory, when suddenly...
While you're moving the robot, I'll go down to the vault and get the metallogen disc. Kearns gave me the combination. Go ahead, but make it snappy. I don't like hanging around here. Oh. No, Thor, no. No, pick it up. Pick it up. into the truck. Intelligent man is gone. You better take a look in the vault, Ken. They may have taken the metallogen disc, too. You feel better now? Just as you suspected, the disc is gone. Well, this means that all our efforts have been useless. Not only that. With the robot in Ernst's possession, anything can happen. Let's hope they try to hide it in that paint factory. Oh, Ernst is too smart for that. He'll have some other angle which none of us have thought of. You're right. There's only one way to handle this. Get back, Thor. Get back. Back, Thor. Back. Back. Get back, Thor. Get back. Push, Thor. Push. Push. Stay there, Thor. Stay there. Get back. Stay there. famous metallogen man. Bring it back here. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a dark panel truck. No license number. Make unknown. It is believed to be manned by a couple of armed men and is supposedly transporting a gigantic ape. Car 712. Proceed at once to the municipal zoo. The possibility exists that the famous gorilla Thor may have been removed from his cage there. by using this telephone, but it's urgent. Is Nordic there yet? Hold the line. Nordic, boss is on the phone. He says it's urgent. I'll be right there.
What's on your mind, Professor? They are. Well, I'll get started right away. What about the robot? We haven't got him in the tunnel yet. I'll take care of him from this end. You rush over here with that aid. No, you can't take him back to the zoo, unless you want to run smack into the police. I got you, boss. I've got to leave. You stay here till I get back. After that, everything suddenly went black. The next thing I knew, Dad and Mr. Morgan had returned. Did you get a look at any of the men? Yes, one. I believe I'd recognize him if I ever saw him again. Well, that's fine, Miss Arnold. No, I think I'd better take a run out to the zoo. Mind if I go along, Inspector? Not at all. Come along. Sure, be on the spot when they find out that ape's gone. Not if you're smart. How do you figure that? Go through the secret entrance of the cage. Open the iron gate. Take away the lock and chain. They'll think Thor got away by his own cunning. That's a good idea. Someone? There's a gorilla wandering around loose in the west end of town. We've got orders to investigate if Thor got out of his cage. Well, as far as I know, that ape's in his cage sound asleep right now. That may be the inspector now. We'd better wait and see. Good evening, Inspector. We were just going in to check up on that gorilla. Oh, you men wait here. Mr. Morgan and I will go in and have a look. This is a gorilla's cage. Well, he's gone. He took the lock and chain with him. You'd better not overlook the fact that someone might have let him out, but wants us to believe that he escaped by himself. Sure you didn't see anyone take that gorilla out of here tonight? Positive. There's no way out of this zoo except by the front gate. Unless he climbed over that fence back there. Well, I guess that's about all we can do tonight. Wait a minute, Inspector. Chain, will you? Wait a minute. I have an idea. Instead of keeping him in here, why don't we lock him up in the city jail? What could that do? Don't you see? You will have him in safekeeping while I put out a rumor that the ape is being kept at the Bainbridge Laboratory. 
This will attract the attention of the culprits, who undoubtedly will try to get him back. That's when you'll take over. Oh, I get it. And I must admit, it's an excellent bit of strategy. I thought you might be interested in this article. It says the police found the ape last night and are holding him at the Bainbridge Lamp. It looks like a trap to me. I believe it's worthwhile looking into. If it'll make you happy, go ahead. But first, you'll have to drive over to Nora's place and see Flint. Tell him to open the door of the tunnel so that I can move the robot in there for the time being. Okay, Professor. And if Flint wants to come for the ride, I'll take him along when I case Arnold's lab. Someone came here to relieve me. Open the door of that tunnel. So Ernest can make the metallurgy man walk in there. to do a little errand for him. We're going to take this ladder up just in case. She recognizes me and calls the cops. Right. Follow that car. I'll drive around the corner and park the car. If she comes here, show her upstairs and make her comfortable. Go back to the Bainbridge Laboratory and tell Mr. Ken Morgan to come over here right away. Vacancies here. I got one upstairs room. May I see it? Sure.
I'm afraid this won't do. Hey! sent for me to meet her here. You must have come to the wrong place. Help! Help! Stay right where you are. succeed in their ingenious plan to recover the Metallogen Man? Will Ernst hirelings find what they're searching for? Don't fail to see The Secret Tunnel, the ninth exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. Metallogen man has been stolen. Babs trails Ernst Henchman to one of their hideouts, where she's made a captive. Ken Morgan attempts to rescue her when suddenly... A young lady sent for me to meet her here. You must have come to the wrong place. Help! Help! Stay right where you are.
She was just climbing out the window when I nabbed her. Come on, sweetheart, I'm taking you in. Ken! 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 Stand back, we're gonna break down the door. Fabs, are you all right? Yes, but am I glad to see you. I called the police as soon as I got your message. Thanks to them, I'm all in one piece. I think we'd better take a look in the rest of these rooms. If you need us, holler. Fine. Did you find out anything here? No, I no sooner stepped in this house when that woman locked me in here. Looks like a draftsman or an engineer lived here. There's no one upstairs. Same down here. I guess we'd better get back to headquarters and send some detectives over and give this place a double O. Let's go. What is it? It's a map of some sort. It's labeled overlay, number 9876. Rooming house undoubtedly means the place we're in right now. The location of the garage is clear enough, but I can't figure out what they have to do with the sewer tunnel. We'd better get back to the lab. Your father will be worried about you. I'll take this along with us. The only thing I can't figure out is what they mean by triangulate to find point of contact. What do you make of it, Dad? No more than Ken has already figured out, my dear. Is this map all you found of the rooming house? All that could be of any interest to us. Well, sooner or later we may find out what has become of our metallurgy man. I hope the police find a clue soon. I certainly hope we recover it again before long. In the hands of such an unscrupulous man as Ernst, could become a definite menace to society. You're quite right, my dear. Obviously, this is a key to something which Ernst or someone connected with him has taken great pains to conceal. If I could only find out what they mean by point of contact. What's the triangle for? I wanted to see what an equilateral triangle will show if I use the two points marked X for a base. Did this show you anything? No, it doesn't. Do you think Morgan might have found the overlay map in your room? Well, come to think of it, he might have. That's bad. Why? That map won't tell him anything. Don't be too sure about that. There are two crosses on his map the same as on this one. They indicate two of our locations. One he already knows, the rooming house. Oh. And the other, Flint's repair shop. I follow you. You're afraid he might go there next. That's exactly right. But when he gets there, you and Flint know what to do. Have you seen Ken Morgan snooping around this neighborhood? No. Well, what makes you think you'll come here? I found one of our maps. You think you'll call the cops? No, I don't. But the boss figures Morgan will do a little investigating before calling the police. I get it. And Ernst sent you here so we could give him a rousing welcome. That's the idea.
Drive his car in there while I tie him up. should have telephoned by now. Don't you think we should go to that place on Clinton Street and make sure he's all right? No, my dear. I think the best thing we can do is to be patient. Our going over there might only interfere. Maybe so. But it's awfully hard to sit here waiting. We'll come back a little later on time. It looked like he's careless. <coughs> to saw this board right across this line I've marked. Yes. I sure will, Professor. When it comes to working on invention, that's right in my line, sir. Yes, well, you just work on the board. Out. Only that I've been a dope for not realizing what any five-year-old child could have figured out. Will you hold that, Professor? Yeah, I've got it. Have you got a compass handy? Here you are. Now look. We already know that this X indicates the rooming house. And this X 
marking a repair shop on Clooney Street is only another point for the triangulation. Yes, but what is that triangulation? Did you find that out? Yes, accidentally. Now, by placing the compass here, I draw a complete circle in this manner. Thus, at one point, the circumference of the circle passes over the line marked sewer. But what does that show you? Well, don't you see, my dear, what the map calls triangular for point of contact? Means the point where the circumference of the circle passes over the line marked sewer tunnel. Am I right, Ken? Absolutely. And you know what that means? That point is the empty paint factory. You don't say. Paint factory. Just think of it. How come I've done a thing like that? Must have been a soul. Don't worry, Flash. It was only a cheap table. Yes. Wait a minute, Ken. Isn't the paint factory near where you believe the meteor ride is located? Absolutely. Now it all becomes clear to me. Undoubtedly, Ernst is using that factory as a base of operations. I wouldn't even be surprised if we found our metallogen man concealed there someplace. Could be. Well, that settled the... Wait a minute. Who are you going to call? The police, of course. I wouldn't do that. Not until I've had another chance to take a look at that factory. Ken, you're not going there alone. All right, I'll take Flash with me. Who, me? Oh, no, not me, Mr. Kane. I've got too much work to do around here. You know I ain't no coward, Mr. Kane. I'm just timid. All you have to do is sit in the car with this gun in your hand and keep your eyes open. Nothing will happen. I sure hope you're right, Mr. Ken. I may be here when it starts, but I positively won't be here when it ends. Take it easy, Flash. in these holes. Right. Better get around the curve now. We're ready to let her go. Okay.
fix him a good. the mystery of the magic metal? What new terrors will Thor the ape bring about? Don't fail to see 40,000 Volts, the 10th exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape at this theater next week. trails Professor Ernst hirelings to a deserted sewer tunnel where he discovers the stolen metallogen man when suddenly... Look. Ken Morgan just came into the tunnel. senses and disconnected the metallogen disc. Well, let's take a look and find out. How are we going to get out of here? This tunnel comes to a dead end back there. There's only one thing to do. Start digging. Okay. Take another step, mister. I'll blast you with this long-range artillery. Flash, wake up, wake up. What are you trying to do, Mr. Kent? Shoot me with my own gun? Snap out of it and let's get going. I'd better phone the police. Phone the police for what? Robots in a tunnel down there under the building. I want them to guard it until we can get it to the laboratory. Oh. Now this thing's useless to us. Let's leave it here then. Not in your life. The boss would be sore as a boil if we left it here. Now you two bring it along. We'll get it out of here through the basement of the rooming house.
bring it on up these stairs. This is how we get down into the tunnel. Lead on, McDuff. We'll follow you. down over here till I found out what Professor Ernst wants to do with it. Don't you know enough to close that door? Flint and Butler are still out there. Did you get the meteorite? No, not yet. We did a lot of blasting, but if it's there as you believe, it must be buried pretty deep underground. We left the robot out in the lab. Is that all right with you? What did you do that for? I told you to leave it in the tunnel until you finished the job. That's right. But you see, we had a little bad luck. We can't use that tunnel anymore. How do you figure that out? It didn't cave in, did it? No, but just as we got ready for another blast, Morgan suddenly appeared. You incompetent fools. And you have nerve enough to stand there and tell me that one man scared the three of you out of your wits. He didn't scare any of us. We just maneuvered him into the right position and set off the blast. Well, that's different. You mean you were finally successful in eliminating Mr. Morgan? Well, it looked that way for a while. But uh, later we found out that he got away somehow and even took the metallogen disc off the robot. I should have known better than to trust any of you. All I can do now is figure out another angle. What about those samples of rock I brought over yesterday? They are not of meteoric origin. You mean there's no metallogen in the tunnel? I didn't say that. But you did. If just... you let me do the talking and the thinking, we'll get along much faster. Sorry, boss. I'm still convinced there's meteorite buried near that tunnel. It'll take a lot of time and effort to get it out. But after the way things turned out today, it's going to be mighty tough to do any more digging. That's true. We daren't even risk going near the place. Then what can we do? Simply lie low and let Morgan and Arnold dig it out for us. Then we take it away from them, huh, Professor? Something like that. Now, give me time to think. I'll figure out another angle. You haven't been to the paint factory all this time, Ken. There and in the tunnel beneath. The sewer tunnel? Metallogen disc. How'd you get that back? I tried to get the metallogen man, too. But Ernst's men got away with it when I went to phone the police. Well, at least we know that Ernst can't operate the robot now. Would you like to know what he was using it for? Yes, yes, of course. To dig rock out of the tunnel. Is this a specimen of that rock? Yes, I brought it over here to see if it contained any meteoric substance. Well, the first thing in the morning, I'll take it to an assay laboratory and have it analyzed. In the meantime, I suggest you find a safe place for that disk. You can rest assured I will. Oh, Ken, uh, I almost forgot. Inspector Hamilton called, and he's very anxious to talk to you. Yes, I think I know what's bothering him. You mean the gorilla? Sure. He's probably upsetting their jail routine, and the inspector wants to get rid of him. Well, you really can't blame him for that. I'd better go over and pacify him.
Come on, big boy. Show us which way to go. If you ask me, the only place you'll take it to is a zoo. Don't forget, somebody trained this ape. And I believe that person is mixed up with Professor Ernst. So you figure on making a homing pigeon out of a gorilla, huh? Roughly speaking, that's the idea. Well, at least it's worth a try. Come on, throw it. was certainly a waste of time. And a long walk. My feet are killing me. I thought I had a good idea, but it turned awful sour. Well, I guess we may as well just lock him in his cage. That's all we can do. See if you can wake up the night watchman. Get down out of here. Get out of here. about that. I ain't seen how to hire that fella since the day this ape escaped. He figured he'd get canned for being careless, so he just ups and quits. Now let's put Thor back in his cage and make sure he's safely locked up this time. The sooner we get him off our hands, the better. Now go ahead. I'll get a lock and chain and I'll bring you right over to the cage. Fine. Huh? Thor, come on! He's ordered to that lock. Only one. And from now on, anybody that bars is going to bring it right straight back to me. See that they do, or you may have to do some explaining in the police headquarters. Well, good night, and thanks for bringing the Thor back. Good night. Listen, Morgan, if you're going to ask us to get that ape out of his cage again, forget it. No, nothing like that. I just happen to remember, Ernst's house lies right over this hill behind the zoo. As long as we're in the neighborhood, why don't we drop in and see if anything's stirring? Oh, man, check from time to time. They've never found anybody near the place. Well, we may as well take a look at it. It suits me. Well, this is the place. Murray, you'd better take a look around the grounds. Okay. Pass key that might fit this lock? I might, yeah. You 
You wait here in case anyone comes. If I don't come out in a short time, you come in and find out why. You can depend on that. That must be the signal from the hallway. Sure, somebody's in the house. Better close that door. Oh, wait. Let's prepare a fitting reception for our guest. succeed in obtaining the metallogen man by trickery? Will the snarling, menacing ape break loose again to wreak his vengeance? Don't fail to see The Mad Professor, the 11th exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. to his master, decides upon a novel scheme. When the plan fails, he rushes to the home of Professor Ernst to make certain that no one is hiding there.
clear out of here. The cops are coming. We'll finish Morgan once and for all. Throw the switch on that control panel. It's a lucky thing for you I came in here when I did. I thought you were a goner when I saw that 4th of July display they put on for you. What are you talking about? Well, don't tell me you didn't know all those electric sparks were flying about you. Well, certainly not. The last thing I remember is fighting with three men. Wait a minute, Morgan. That electricity has affected your head. There was no one in here but yourself when I came in. Then you must have a secret way out of here. They're looking for a secret door in this room. Well, it's evidently not in here. Hey, could it be in that corridor? It's not impossible. Well, wait a minute. I think it would be advisable for you to remain here and guard the place. I want to make arrangements to have the metallurgy man move back to the Bainbridge Laboratories. That's okay by me. While I'm waiting, I'll see if there's a secret way out of here. Fine. I'll be back soon. Well, I'll send the other officer down to keep you company. Good. Good morning, Mr. Ken. Good morning, Flash. What are you doing with all these books? I decided to become an inventor, like Professor Arnold. Well, that's splendid. I'm glad to hear it. I'll be glad for myself, too. Because when I start inventing, I won't have to work no more. All I have to do is just sit around and invent. I see. But you still haven't told me what you're going to do with all these. Well, I'll just come to that, sir. You see, I have to first find out what has been invented before I start inventing. I see. Then you intend to find all that out by reading these, huh? Oh, no, sir. I can't read none of them, sir. You see, it's written in French and Italian and Spanish. But when I've come to be a big inventor, look mighty put in my library. I see what you mean. Did the robot get back in there? Yes, that rabbit is in his hut, sir. Good morning, Flash. Good morning, Miss Babs. Good morning, Flash. Good morning, Professor. I must compliment you on your splendid work, Ken. When you called last night and told us you found the metallurgy man, we were so excited we could hardly sleep. I'm only sorry I didn't get back to the control unit as well. Well, at least we know that this much of my invention is safe. Did you learn anything from those samples of rock I brought you? Yes, I have the report of the assayer right here. We had to wait for it. That's why we're so late this morning. It says the rock contained no meteoric substance whatsoever. <laughs> we're apparently looking for a will of a wisp a figment of our overwrought imaginations. Now, Professor, you mustn't get discouraged. That's just what I've been telling Dad. Your daughter's right. I'm sure we're on the right track. You really believe that? Absolutely. In fact, I'm so positive, I intend to apply for a permit right now, authorizing us to dig farther in that abandoned sewer tunnel. And in spite of this report, you propose to go ahead? That's right. And I'm going to get a crew of men who will dig and blast until we do find what we're looking for. Good luck, Ken. I'll need it. Mr. Ken? Yes? I changed my mind about being an inventor. Not with all these books. 
What are you going to do with it? I'm going to open me up a Lynn Lease library. Find out. Morgan has guards stationed at both the rooming house and the paint shop. And we can't use either one of our entrances to the sewer tunnel. And before I forget it, I saw a truck delivering explosives at the paint factory. In that case, Morgan must have gotten permission from the city to explore for that meteorite. We can't stop him. Unless... What's on your mind, boss? How many times has Morgan seen you? Only once. That was some time ago. Why? Just sit in that chair. Take off your hat. What's up? I'm going to do a little remodeling job on your face. Morgan is working in that tunnel. He's undoubtedly hiring help. And when I get through with this, it will be safe for you to apply for a job. Well, I never had any trouble getting a job if I really wanted one. Well, that's fine. Now what we need is a patch over the eye. And a new name. How about uh, Nelson? Sam Nelson. Now I doubt if even your mother would recognize you. No, Professor. You could have made a lot of money in the movies. Yes, sir. You're certainly going to make people look like what they are. That's fine, me. Now go get yourself a job. You bet I will. Sorry, I have no local references, but uh, you can check with any of the big mining companies in Nevada. Just ask them about Sam Nelson. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Maybe so, but I'm sure I never worked for you before. Do you think you can handle this blasting job? <laughs> you just give me crack at it. You be satisfied. All right, I'll give you a chance. Fine. You'll find the blasting powder and all the necessary tools you need back there. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morgan. I give you A1 chop. Control unit is a waste of time. I know she worked that thing quite often. Of course I do. One of these days, someone at the Bainbridge lab is going to get a bit careless and put the metallogen disc back on the robot. I see. And when they do, things will begin to happen fast. Fast and furious. I've got good news. I just found out that the ape is back in his cage at the zoo. Are you sure? I ought to know. I just came from there. I'm going to see if he's all right. can't afford to take any unnecessary chances. Don't worry about me.
right. Now do you think it's safe for me to try to get my job back at the zoo? Absolutely not. If we want that ape, we know where to find him. I'm all ready to set off the blast, sir. All right, I'll tell the boys to go for cover and signal you when it's clear. Yes, sir. Collect your tools and get out of the way. you can find. These men will have to be kept warm. Okay, Mr. Morgan. Come on, you and I have got a date with a district attorney. Just a minute, Morgan. Go on, get up that ladder. Let me say something first, will you? I know the jig is up. I know you got me dead to rights. But before you turn me over to the cops, give me a chance to square myself. Why should I? Well, for no particular reason except I can do a big favor for you. I don't want any favors from you. Now go on, get up that ladder. And you won't give me a chance to prove I'm not as bad as you think? What are you driving at? Just this. You put in a good word for me with the cops. And I'll take you to where Ernest is hidden that control unit of the robot. How do I know this isn't a trick? Well, you're not taking any chances. You've got a gun. I haven't. All right, go ahead. But if you try any of your tricks, I'll make you wish you hadn't. All right. Wait a minute. What are you trying to pull? The police and I have already searched this place from top to bottom. I know it, but there's a secret room in this house you've never been in. You wouldn't even know where to look for it. Secret 
radio device aid him in his diabolical schemes? Will Professor Arnold be able to keep his robot under control? Don't fail to see Shadows of Destiny, the 12th exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week. as a tunnel worker, attempts to kill Ken Morgan. Failing to do so, he lures him to Ernst Hideout with a false promise to turn the metallogen disc over to him. Suddenly... If you know the layout back of that door, but you've never been back here yet. Go ahead, I'm following. Looks like there's a door in these walls, doesn't it? The control unit is right in that room. You get it. I'll wait here. All right. Hope you enjoy your bath down there. with Morgan. You mean you were dumb enough to then find out who you were? What could I do? Morgan recognized me and then the whole gang jumped on me. I told you, Professor, this wasn't a one-man job. You should have sent Butler and me along with him. I did all right without your help. You call it doing all right till a bogan get the best of you? Who says he got the best of me? Fact is, Ken Morgan isn't going to bother you anymore. So you showed him the error of his way? No. I showed him the error of trying to make a sucker out of me. I'll believe that when I see it. You'll see it all right. Right out of the end of the stairs. other room. There must be a device in there to operate this trap door.
and breathe. Thanks for getting me out, Inspector. Think nothing of it. What I want to know is how you got down there. Like a fool, I walked right into their trap. Well, lucky thing I got here when I did. I'll see. Well, by the way, how did you happen to come here? The officers who were here with you the other day asked me to make a further check on the place. Better get into some dry clothes. Phone me later. All right, Inspector. And thanks again. It's all right. Then I went back to the tunnel to see how the work was progressing. And the blasting failed to uncover any trace of the meteorite. To all appearances. Well, I think we'd better give up the search. In the first place, it's too expensive. In the second place, it's hopeless. I'm sorry, Professor. I can't agree with you. You mean you refuse to quit? Definitely. Mr. Morgan. What is it, Hartley? You want me to let you know if anything important happened. So I figured I'd better come right over. Has someone been hurt? No, it's this stuff. We blasted it out of the walls of the tunnel. What do you think, Professor? Oh, the color and the density give it the appearance of meteoric substance. But can you tell if it contains any metallogen? No, not until I pulverize it and make a test. Then I suggest you do that right away. I'll go back to the tunnel with Hartley. I want to see how much of this rock has been uncovered. Friends, slip out and see if the coast is clear. I want to see how Morgan looks in that well. Everything's all right. Come on. There's no one down there. And the cops must have faced him out. Because I left that trap door closed after Morgan had fallen through it. That means he's as much alive as Zion. What makes you so sure he didn't drown? Because if he were dead, the police wouldn't let them move the body without the coroner's okay. I guess you're right, boss. Gee, it's too bad, but I, I did the best I could. I'll see that you get another chance to even your score with Morgan. Shut the trap door. Let's get back to work. That's fine, Frank. Right there. Now you hold that a minute. Very carefully. I'm ready to make the test. I'm sure he is, but I'm sure I is. You know, if this thing works, I'm going to teach you how to run it, Flash. What for you do that? Well, once you get familiar with how it operates, you won't be afraid of it anymore. substance I put into that tube is almost pure metallogen. That's good news. Who said that? Here, now, Flash, you take hold of this control. Here, give me that. Put your other hand on that one. Now, turn this one slowly to the right. Now, turn that one. Now to the 
not for the other. Now turn this one straight up. See how it works? There's nothing to be afraid of. Yes, I can see. I sure depreciate it. <laughs> Here, let me take it. into the ball and lock it securely. I'm going to run over the tunnel and tell Mr. Morgan the good news. Yes, sir, I'll lock it securely. I'll do just exactly like you told me. That's fine, Flash. I'll see you later. Goodbye, sir. Morgan undoubtedly returned to the tunnel to do some more exploring for that meteorite. Yeah, but what I'm trying to figure out is how we can keep tabs on what's doing there. We can. Not as long as he keeps all entrances guarded day and night. I think I know a way to find out. How's that? We built two of these control units at the same time. But we didn't have enough metallurgy to operate both of them. And Morgan has the other one, huh? That's correct. But how's that going to tell you anything? That's very simple. If Morgan finds what he's looking for, Arnold will try it out in the other control unit. So all I have to do is switch it on and watch for a reaction. And all we do is sit tight and wait for something to happen. That's all. Kiddo, remember that rabbit will do just what you want. chance you got, the way things stack up now. I think I've got a very good one. Yeah? What's that? The rock they dig out of that tunnel will have to be smelted in order to extract the metallogen from it. There's only one place in town that can be done. Wait a minute. If I'm not mistaken, Joe Butler has a very good friend working at that smelter. Perfect. Get in touch with Butler right away. Tell him to make a deal with his friend so he'll keep us advised as to the disposition of the metallogen. Good idea, boss. 
They're moving Arnold's Metallurgy from the smelter to the Jefferson Bank vault for armored truck right now. That's the break we've been waiting for. Are you sure you're feeling all right, boss? Never felt better in my life. Now listen to me, Flint. I want you to pick up Meade right away. Then drive over to the abandoned brickworks and wait for the bank truck to arrive. What it does, get the Metallurgy and bring it here. What chance have we got against an armored truck? Yeah, and how are you going to get the driver to take over to the brickworks? I happen to know that any Jefferson truck is equipped with a short wave radio to enable the bank to contact it while in transit. Doesn't help us any. It will, when I cut in on that wavelength and give the driver my instructions. I never thought of that. Now, don't lose any time. Every second counts. Now, let me see. What was the name of the manager of that board? I've got it. Gilbert. John Gilbert. Gilbert, calling Jefferson Armored Truck. Gilbert, calling Jefferson Armored Truck. Yes, Gilbert, this is McGarry. What's up? I've just learned there may be trouble if you try to deliver that shipment here at the bank. Then where shall I take it? Drive to the brickworks on Highfield Road. I'll have some men meet you there. OK, I'll call you right back and verify that change. That's what I want you to do. Now we're sunk when he calls that You won't be able to. I'll fix it up right now. Someone's going to haywire with this set. I'll try and fix it. That truck is a half an hour overdue now. Oh, will you please call us the minute he gets there? Thank you. I certainly hope nothing has gone wrong. I've got a feeling something has. I'd better take a drive along the road they'll be coming in on. Mind if I use your car? I'm sorry. It's in the shop, Ken. OK, I'll take a cab. succeed in obtaining the world's last known supply of metallogen? Has Thor, the jungle beast, turned on his master? Don't fail to see the gorilla at large, the 13th exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape at this theater next week.
Professor Arnold has obtained the world's last supply of metallogen and is sending it to a safe place for keeping. Ernst hijacks the shipment, but Ken Morgan goes to recover it when suddenly... Nice, please. Stand back. I'm a doctor. Better let me take a look at you. I'm all right. You better take a look at him, see if he's hurt. You'd better go upstairs and let me in. Think they've had time to make the run over from Brickworks? Just about. You got the metallogen, huh? What do you think? That's swell. The boss is sure anxious to get his hands on that stuff. Turned out all right. There's enough metallogen here to operate a thousand robots. Well, what about Morgan and Arnold? If you start manufacturing those things, they'll have the police right on your neck. Do you think I'm fool enough to try to manufacture anything in this country? As soon as I can make the necessary arrangements for transportation, we're moving to a foreign country. Lock, stock, and barrel. What country have you in mind, boss? Well, that's a secret, which I don't intend to reveal even to you until the proper time. Are we going by boat or plane? We're shipping our stuff by boat. First thing in the morning, we'll order crates and pack up all our paraphernalia. We'll store it in a place I've arranged for on the west coast, so it can be shipped from there by boat later on. Then we're going by boat too, eh, boss? Certainly not. The minute we tried to board ship, we'd be arrested. Uh, you can say that again. like you told me to. Fine. Now I'll go get that eight. Take him over to the vet's place where we stored some of our stuff. There happens to be a cage there large enough to accommodate him. All right. Take you on a nice little joy ride. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
soon as I found that the cab driver was all right, I got in touch with Inspector Hamilton. He and several of his men helped me search Ernst's house again, but to no avail. Do you believe those hoodlums could have taken the metallogen to one of their hideouts? It's possible, but not very likely. However, the inspector is leaving no stone unturned and is right now checking every one of the places they've been known to frequent. What about the driver and the guard in the armored truck? Have they been located yet? Yes, Ernst's men had waylaid them and locked them up in the old brickworks on Highfield Road. Fortunately, they weren't hurt. Whatever crimes have already been committed by Ernst will appear insignificant should he decide to build an army of those robots now that he has the metallogen in his possession. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of, Professor. Bainbridge Laboratory, Professor Arnold's office. It's for you, Ken. Ken Morgan speaking. Well, good morning, Inspector. They found the armored truck, but it was empty. Oh, yes, I'm listening, Inspector. Go ahead. Thought you might also be interested to know the apes disappeared again. No, the cage gate was locked. Sounds like an inside job to me. Yes, doesn't it? That's why we've got the watchman down here for questioning. We're also checking the lock and chain from the cage for fingerprints. That's a good idea. Goodbye, Inspector, and thanks for calling. Well, the gorillas disappeared again. What? Yes. But how could anyone get him out of the zoo without the watchman's knowledge? <laughs> I'll bet he's in on it all right. That's what the inspector thinks. But I don't think he had anything to do with it. But what makes you so sure of that? I've got a hunch. It may sound far-fetched, but I'm almost convinced that there's some way the ape can get out without opening the gate to its cage. I think I've got it. What lies on the other side of the hill in back of the zoo? Professor Ernst's house, as we all know. But what possible connection could that have with the gorilla's disappearance? I can't answer that offhand, but Right now, I'm going over to the zoo and take a look around. Do you mind if I come along? No, come ahead. Hold on the fort while we're going, Babs. We'll be right back. I'm going to leave that shortwave radio here for the time being, in case I want to contact you later. OK, boss, I'll stick around and pack the rest of this stuff. We'll move our equipment out sometime tonight, and then something unforeseen happens. That's what worries me, this unforeseen business. You don't need to worry. You're perfectly safe as long as you stay right here in this room. If Norton comes, uh, tell him I've gone to the vets. I want him to meet me there later. All right, I'll tell him. I'd appreciate it if you'd go get the attendant. I'd like to ask him a few questions. Well, certainly, Ken.
starting. What's keeping the boss? Get over there and answer that. Be sure to make it sound natural. Keep your shirt on. The boss left here a long time ago. He ought to be there any minute now. Well, he'd better because I'm getting tired of standing guard over this metallogen. Quit talking so much. What's wrong with you, Butler? You don't sound like yourself. There's nothing wrong. Nothing. All right. I'll see you later. Where'd that call come from? I'll try and find out. Are you going to tell me or do I have to beat it out of you? in Kensington Street. It used to be a hospital for cats and dogs. You could have saved yourself a lot of punishment if you'd have told me that before. Now get over there and set up. I'm gonna tie you up until the police get here. I got work to do. I can't wait around here all day. Well, I know he must be around here someplace. You can find me again if he shows up. house through there? I certainly did. I'll tell you all about it while we're driving. Come on. Wait a minute. Where are we going? To get the metallogen. You really mean that? on your mind. You guys better get out of there. Morgan's on his way over and he may be bringing the cops. How did Morgan know where we are? He found his way in through the tunnel. He was here when Nordic called me. You have the second to lose. Leave there at once. Meet us at the Barclay Airport. Okay, boss. I'll be seeing you. Say, that sure is tough luck. It looks like we're going to lose all this equipment besides what we left over at your house. We can replace everything except the metallogen. That we'd easily take with us. Leave everything here as is. We'll go out the back door. But what about Thor? You don't intend to leave him here, do you? I most certainly do. Where we're going, those apes are a dime a dozen.
sure looks uncomfortable in there. I was just going to tell you to let him out. Oh, gee, boss, that's swell. Come on, Thorn, old boy. I'm sure glad you're coming along with it. You know Don well he isn't. Oh, gee, I thought you changed your mind when you told me to let him out of the cage. Stop worrying about that, ape. He'll probably be better off without you. Well, so long, Thor. I hope they treat you good when you get back to the zoo. This is the place. You'd better wait here until I've had a chance to look it over. All right, Ken, if that's the way you want it. magic detector lead Professor Arnold and his daughter to the stolen metallogen? Will the treacherous Ernst force Arnold to turn the metallogen man over to him? Don't fail to see his last flight, the 14th exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape at this theater. Professor Ernst intends to ship the stolen metallogen out of the country. Ken Morgan, learning this, attempts to regain the valuable metal. Suddenly...
feel now, Ken? I'm all right. Thanks for helping me. I hated to kill that ape, but there was nothing else I could do under the circumstances. I doubt if Ernst would have packed the metallogen into one of these crates. Still, we'd better make sure of it before we leave here. You take that crate over there, and I'll open this one. Okay. Did you find any metallogen, Dan? Well, Ken and I searched another one of Ernst's hideouts, and the police looked every place else we could think of, but found nothing. Well, why didn't Ken come back with you? He went over to police headquarters to talk things over with Inspector Hamilton. I've given up hope of ever finding that metallogen again. Dad, you mustn't feel that way. That's easy enough to say, my dear. Isn't there anything you can do to find the place where Ernst has hidden the metallogen? Of course there is. Why didn't I think of it before? The metallogen detective. Look at that, Babs. It shows a slight reaction. Then the metallogen is still hidden somewhere in the city. You're right, my dear. And the needle points to the north. I'm going to investigate that right away. Oh, Flash. Yeah. Get the car. We're going to drive over to the north end of town. Why couldn't we go to the south end instead? Why the south end, Flash? Well, it's like this, Professor Arnold. If we go to the north end, we'll have to find what we're looking for. And if we find what we're looking for, this here place is going to be cluttered up with them there rabbits. And if this place gets cluttered up with them rabbits, I've got a feeling I'm going to be mighty unhappy about the whole idea. I wouldn't worry about that, Flash. Oh, no, ma'am. I ain't worried about it. But I'm just laying down my little tomatoes. Don't you want me to come along with you? Oh, no, you'd better wait here in case Ken Morgan calls. Very well. Vibrations are getting stronger. Turn to the right at the next corner, Flash. Just as you said, Professor. The needle vibrated peak intensity just as we passed that garage. That's what I thought, too. Did you notice it? Yes, I noticed something was vibrating the way you told me to stop so suddenly. Well, we'll turn off your motor. We're going back there and take a look around that place. Yes. Flash, do you remember Mr. Morgan telling us about this place? You mean what, Mr. Ken got beat up by Professor Oint and his men, and they tried to faxiate him? Oh, no, asphyxiate, Flash. As a... Asphyxiate. That's what I mean. And they found some kind of map or something. Yeah, yeah, that's it, exactly. Don't remember a thing about it. Well, I'll tell you, Flash, suppose you go that way and see if you can find another entrance to this building, and I'll go this way and do the same. Yes, I'll do what you told me, all right. But I already know what I'm going to find. Yo, yeah, what's that? I'm going to find myself full away from here if any trouble starts.
satchel's in there full of some kind of funny cans. Well, bring one here so I can see it. It's the metallogen. Oh, nice work, Flash. Get the other satchels. Get these out of here and then notify the police. Yes, the quicker we get out of here, the better. I don't know. That's the truck. Someone's coming in. Hey, open up, you guys. Flash, I'll open the front door. You drive the truck out. Yes, sir. What do you think you're doing? How did they find this place? That I don't know, but it's since that Morgan and the cops are somewhere nearby. I guess you're right. So the best thing you can do is get the truck with our stuff out of here and take those two along just in case. You get inside the truck. You better stick around. The boss might be here any minute. Tell him we've gone to the other place. All right. Take a look outside and see if the coast is clear. All right, stupid. You want to drive? Go ahead. I don't want to drive. Yes, I'll drive. Yes, name and destination. Where are we going? Go ahead. You'll find out. I'm really getting worried. Dad and Flash have been gone for hours. If I had any idea where to look, I'd go out and try to find him. Dad sometimes forgets he's not as young and agile as he used to be. Don't worry, Babs. I'm sure they're all right. Well, you leave me no choice, Ernst. Under the circumstances, I have to give in to you. Your decision will save you a great deal of inconvenience, my dear Arnold. I've just persuaded Professor Arnold to turn his metallurgy man over to us. I wouldn't trust the old coot. He's probably already got it figured out how to tip the cops off to this place. Don't worry. I won't even let him telephone from here, in case anyone should try to trace the call. Come on, Fred, we'll take the truck. There's a public telephone at Sorrell's gas station on Highway Boulevard. All of you get that stuff loaded. All right, boys, let's get this stuff on the plane. I'm myself in a mess now. me is that airplane motor I heard over the phone. An airplane? Are you sure it wasn't a car? I'm positive. A car motor doesn't make such a roaring noise. Wait a minute. In what direction did your dad say his indicator was pointing? North. But I don't get the connection, Ken. This may be a long shot in the dark, but it seems to me that there's a small airport just beyond the north end of town. There is. I think it's called the Barclay Airport. All right. I'll get a cab and get right out there. You wait here in case Flash should call again. I will. or his chauffeur there? No, ma'am. Nobody here but the mechanic. 
sounded like the idol girl. Then he's the one that tipped her off. Sure. Chances are Morgan and a flock of cops are on their way over here right now. Well, I'm going to make sure that this bird doesn't interfere again. Oh, forget it. Let's get out of here. What about Ernst and Flint? They've got to make their own way off the coast. We can't afford to wait for them. Professor Arnold. He was here, but he's gone now. He went for a ride with Professor Hunt. Where did Ernst take him? I don't know, Mr. Ken. I've been in so much mirrors today that I just can't recall. I'm all confused in the head. Why did they bring you here? I don't know why they brought us here, but some men just took off for the coast, an airplane full of that man tells you. To the coast? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. That's what the men said. I'm going to charter a plane here. I may be able to catch them when they have to come down for gas. You notify the police right away to be on the lookout for Professor Arnold. Yes, sir. You can rest assured. You can depend on that, Mr. King. Give me the police department. There's been a lot of trouble here. Laboratory, Professor Arnold's office. Dad, I'm so relieved to hear your voice. Is Ken with you? No, he isn't. He doesn't know where I am, and he wouldn't even know where to look. Yeah. I can't answer any questions, so don't waste time asking them. Now I'm convinced something dreadful has happened. I'm going to call the police right away. No, no, you mustn't, please. I assure you everything will be all right. Get down to facts. Now listen carefully, Babs, and do exactly as I tell you. I'm sending a messenger to the laboratory right now. You must train the metallurgy man and the control unit over to him. If somebody at the laboratory should ask you any questions, simply say, I want these things for an experiment. Is that clear? Good. Above all, don't let Ken or the police know anything about this. Do you promise? Of course, I'll do whatever you tell me. Hello? Hello? Everything is all set. Drop on and I'll meet the brickworks on Highfield Road. Then you drive over to the lab and get the stuff. Do you want me to take it right out to the airport? Certainly not. Pick me up first and we'll go out together. punishment for his innumerable crimes? And will the metallurgian man turn out to be a force for good or evil? Don't fail to see Justice Triumphs, the final exciting episode of The Monster and the Ape, at this theater next week.
Professor Arnold and Flash are captured by Ernst, whose henchmen are making final preparations to smuggle the metallogen out of the country. Ken Morgan makes a desperate effort to prevent this, when suddenly... Listen carefully, Babs, and do exactly as I tell you. I'm sending a messenger to the laboratory right now. You must train the metallurgy man and the control unit over to him. If somebody at the laboratory should ask you any questions, simply say, I want these things for an experiment. Is that clear? Good. Above all, don't let Ken or the police know anything about this. Do you promise? Of course, I'll do whatever you tell me. Hello. Colonel Adams speaking. I'll take care of that at once. Battery Commander, Zone 11. This is Colonel Adams. A plane is reported entering your zone without authorization. The pilot refuses to identify himself. Bring it down. airport waiting too long. I won't be long, unless this guy's daughter double-crosses us. My daughter will keep her promise to me. She'd better. We'll wait inside. It's a long time since we enjoyed a talk together, Arnold. Come on over. Let's sit down. Talk over old times. It's hard to believe that I once admired your brilliant mind, Ernst. <laughs> then you do admit that I'm brilliant. No. I only thought so once. Now I know you're a madman. A mad genius would be a more polite expression. Flash, where did you leave my father? Miss Babs, I didn't leave him. He left me to take a ride with Professor Ernst. I thought he was with him when he made that phone call. Miss Babs, I'm afraid your father's in real danger. At least he was, till I called police. Oh, no, Flash, you didn't do that. Oh, that'll spoil everything. Well, I didn't mean no harm, Miss Babs. I only did what Mr. Kent told me to before he took off in that airplane. Airplane? What airplane? The one who he's chasing those men then who took the man Tazin. Oh, Flash, please do talk sense for once. Well, suppose you start from the very beginning and tell me everything. Well, Miss Babs, there is no beginning. Your father and me found the mentality. And then some men took us for a ride. Mr. Kent come in and took off an airplane chasing those men who took the mentality from us. Before he left, he told me to call the police. So I called the police. And I got in your car and I come here. And there ain't nothing complaining about that, is it, Miss Babs? No, it's as clear as mud. That's what I thought. Flash, will you do something for me? Yes, ma'am. I'm expecting someone to arrive here any moment. Dad sent him. Now, I don't want you to tell that man anything about you calling the police or ask him any questions. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am, I understand. He's going to get the metallurgy man and take it to Dad. Well, that's the best news I've heard since I was a little picking him. I'll sure be glad to get rid of that monster.
Mr. Arnold's office. Yes, that's, that's right. Please let him come in. sent me over to pick up that robot. There it is. Help yourself. Anybody around here to give me a hand with it? No, there isn't. Well, never mind. I know how to get it out of here. You just plug in that disc. Your old man ought to be back here pretty quick. Please don't let anything happen to him. Nothing will, unless somebody tries to double-cross me. That's one of the men who work for Professor Hunt. I forgot to tell you, I knew he was coming after that rabbit. Tell me? No, I don't think so. I'll try to recollect and see. The man, intelligent man on airplane, airplane, man after the airplane. Oh, uh, let me see now. And he, uh, Professor Hunt. I mean, Professor Arnold. That's all, ma'am. I don't think. I'm... So glad to see you. I've been almost frantic. Have you heard from your father? I know he's with Ernst. Yes, he phoned and instructed me to give the intelligent man the control unit to one of Ernst's men. And you actually did that? I had no choice. It was either that or never seeing Dad again. Talk to my daughter, please. Hold the line. I'll call her. Keep him on the line as long as you can. I'll grab another phone and try to have the police trace his call. Oh, hello, Dad. 
I can't hear you. Would you speak a little louder, please? I asked you, has the messenger left there with the metallogen man? Poor child, she's so upset she doesn't seem to understand what I'm saying. She'd better calm down unless she wants something very unpleasant to happen to you. Babs, pay attention, please. I can hear you a little bit better now. What were you asking me? Yes, they're on the line right now. Thanks, Inspector. What's that? I can't hear you again. Yes, yes, now I understand. That man left here quite a while ago. Are you all right, Dad? We were disconnected. Don't worry, Babs. The police have had time enough to cut in on this line and check it. The inspector promised to call us back and report what he found out. came from the brickworks on Highfield Road? Thanks, Inspector. We'll be there right away. Come on, Babs. The police are already on their way there. control unit. Are you sure you weren't followed? Not a chance. Good. Now let's not waste any more time. We must get to the airport as quickly as possible. But what are you going to do about him? Lock him up in here. His friends will undoubtedly remember this place and come to find him sooner or later. Why lock me up now? You've got everything you wanted. My dear Arnold, it pains me to inconvenience you, but I can't take any unnecessary chances when I'm so close to complete success. That's just in case you'll get any ideas. you're safe, sir. Maybe you think I'm not. I hope we'd find Ernest here with you. Well, you're a little late. He left here a few minutes ago for the Barclay Airport. We'll try to pick him up on the road before he gets there. Mind if I go along? Not at all. You'd better take your father home in the car. I'll see you later. Controls in Zone 19 to be on the lookout for a dark panel truck heading for the Barclay Airport on Stewart Road. Hello. The truck is now heading north on Stewart Road. All officers are warned to be careful as the men on it are heavily armed. this way. Put up that next side road.
know how much the loss of the metallogen means to you, Dad. You've given so many years of your life to the making of success of your invention. Years of work and hope and struggle mean nothing compared with the fulfillment of an idea. That's true. Providing that idea is used for the betterment of our fellow men. That, of course, would have been the case had we been able to go on with our plan to build thousands of those metallogen men. Yes, Ken, but on the other hand, we must not quarrel with Providence. It certainly is a tribute to your greatness, Professor Arnold, that you're able to accept our failure so philosophically. It's not a failure, Ken. It's only a stepping stone to more important discoveries to come. Well, while you're all inventing things, I sure hope you discover a reason to pay for me. <laughs> I'll gladly do that, Flash. You've earned it. Yes. It sure makes me feel good to be employed for folks that appreciate my unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> left here quite a while ago? Yes, indeed. Then his hat must have flown back in through the window. Mind if I smoke? <laughs> 